Dobar dan. Um, when, I, when I moved to Serbia three and a half years ago, um, I decided that I would learn the essentials um, of the language. Uh, Dobar dan is just one small thing. But it wasn't the first. Um, actually, the uh, first most important thing that I needed to learn, I used when I would go to Ada Siganja, this park in Belgrade, uh, to play some football. And I would walk up to people and say, Zvini, uh, ja sam Brazilac, da li mogu da igram? <laughs> and they would go, oh, Brazilac, može, 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 može. And then they see me play and they go, ah, oh, katastrofa. <laughs> so um, I learned that very quickly and unfortunately I didn't learn enough to deliver my TEDx Novi Sad talk today in Serbian. So um, I just want to say that I wish I could uh, deliver this in Serbian and, and respect and honor the local language. Um, and if something is lost in translation, please come see me afterwards and I'd be happy to, to clarify. Um, I'd like to start with a talk, and in respect of being a risk taker, um, I want to use a little Serbian. So my first question is, and I'd like to see a show of hands, koji je prvi put saznao za TED gledajući neki od TED govora? Okay, I think I made myself understood, that's great. Um, second question is, koji je prvi put od vas čio za TED kada ste prvi put čuli za TEDx Novi Sad? Great, okay. So I have a theory, and my theory is that people learn about TED through uh, one of two ways, uh, or mostly one of two ways. Uh, the first is by watching a TED talk online, which most of you um, answer to the first question. Um, and the second is by attending a TEDx event. And I think, um, and I think that once people do one, they like to go and do the other. I think uh, being a TEDster is really addictive in that, in that sense. Uh, when people watch something that is um, inspiring online, they want to go and experience the real thing live. And I think that's why a lot of you are here today. And as a, as a student, or as, excuse me, as a teacher, um, I sort of want to inspire my, my students to, um, to be aware of the innovation and the open-mindedness and the thinking outside of the box that a lot of the TED speakers have. So when, I, when I'm teaching about sound in my science classroom, um, I show them even Grant's uh, talk about making sound visible. And when I'm talking about, when we're learning about the, uh, the brain, um, I show them Jim Bolte Taylor's Stroke of Insights, a great uh, TED talk. And I hope that through these talks that they become inspired and look at um, some of the things that are happening outside of the classroom about what they're learning. And I've also uh, created, in, started in January, um, I started a blog called TED for Schools. And this blog is my modest contribution in guiding teachers um, through the vast library of TED Talks that are available on TED.com. And hopefully with this blog and hopefully with uh, what I do in it is basically reflect on the uh, experiences my, my students share with me after they see a particular talk. Um, and I hope that with this blog, that uh, teachers will be encouraged to use TED Talks to enhance their own curriculum, uh, to um, inspire their own students through the passion of the TED speakers. But a blog is, you know, it's nice and everything, but uh, you know, it's not the only way people learn about, about TED. Um, and also blogging is to sitting down and being in front of a computer. So I, I decided to do something more, more active. Um, and that was uh, in January, um, I obtained a license for the first TEDx Youth event in Serbia, um, and a TEDx youth event, uh, just like today's event is focused on education, a TEDx youth event is focused on um, ideas for youth. Um, these, are, these events are actually oftentimes organized by youth. Um, so what I did, uh, together with Nikola Milicic, here is the co-founder of TEDx Youth at ISB, uh, we started organizing this event in Serbia for the first time. As we um, had our meetings and started discussing what the event should look like, I kept reflecting on what a great experience this would be for a student. What a great experience um, students of, of any age could have putting together an experience like the one you're having today. We were able to involve some of our own students at the International School of Belgrade in the, pro in the process. Um, we reached out to the local Serbian community and we were also um, able to involve uh, local Serbian high school students as well as uh, local Serbian college students in the process. And it, it became a truly transdisciplinary project that um, I wish every school would have. And what I'm going to share with you today is a bit of my vision in that regard and some of the results that we obtained with uh, TEDx Youth at ISB. The first obvious, um, the first obvious step in, in organizing something of this dimension is teamwork. You cannot do it on your own. 
And um, this is the team at TEDx Youth at ISB, uh, which is composed of over 20 volunteers, um, uh, some of which are high school students, like I said. Um, the, the obvious thing about teamwork is in, in academia, we all know what happens, right? You, you assign a, a group work for, for your class, and you, know, you put three students in a group, and one works on the introduction, the other works on the body of the essay, the other one works on the conclusion. And they email each other the night before, and then you get this mosaic in the end. And this really cannot happen. There's no room for that in organizing an event like this. The communication needs to be simultaneous. It needs to be uh, real time. Otherwise, things fall apart. Uh, these, one thing that I'd like to say about these volunteers is that most of them um, had not met before. Uh, so it was a very social uh, project as well. And, um, and also, the, um, they only met about twice before the actual event. So they, uh, they had a lot of interpersonal skills that they had to work on, and that was a great opportunity for them to develop these skills that are so important. Another obvious um, aspect of uh, the TEDx program is um, that everybody today um, in school should be learning a second language, and I argue that perhaps even a third language. And a very good example of that is that I'm here, and I don't think there are many Portuguese-speaking audience members today, um, and we covered my, my Serbian. Um, so it's obvious that you need additional languages to be able to communicate these ideas. So imagine um, what, how powerful it would be to have students working on delivering quality translations for TEDx uh, talks like today's. Before I became a science uh, teacher, I was teaching English as an additional language. Um, and in, early in that life, um, I remember how boring it was to give my students, how boring my students thought it was uh, when they got like a Guns N' Roses or a Nirvana um, song to translate the lyrics to. Um, and I think the reason why they found it that boring is because there was no purpose. Like, why am I translating this song? There's no purpose. It's cool and all. I can listen to it once, but I can't listen to it four or five times um, to, to translate it properly. So it becomes meaningless. So what's the solution? Imagine having, having students uh, translate these talks into, lo into foreign languages, using and practicing their foreign languages to spread ideas, to spread the ideas that they really, really believe in. Um, it, and when I say translate, I'm not only talking about translating from Serbian to English or English to Serbian, translating to other languages, Arabic, Chinese, Portuguese. Um, so there's a lot of potential to engage students in uh, translating and spreading ideas that they believe in um, and giving them meaning in learning a foreign language. Today, for example, um, or actually another aspect of it is that they um, not only have to translate, they can also blog about it. They can connect with uh, translators of the same language that live in other parts of the world and share um, and discuss and talk about a shared experience that they have, which is watching a particular talk. And the last fact on the slide is that the, um, there's uh, the TED Open Translation Project, which uh, today counts with 81 volunteers in Serbia who are translating TED Talks into Serbian, and TED Talks in English into Serbian. Um, only three of these 81 volunteers are high school students, and they don't really count because I invited them to, to be part of the project. Uh, but imagine again how powerful it would be to engage more and more uh, teachers and or students and their teachers, their language teachers, in delivering and peer review and peer editing uh, these TED Talks and translating them into foreign languages. I think that would be a much more meaningful and powerful uh, language experience for them. Another part of, um, that I think is really important in schools is obviously um, teaching kids to care about the environment. Um, what I find is that um, it's that important because the students you have today are probably the first, if not the first, uh, one of the first or the first to have formal education about global problems, things like global warming and the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Um, because you're learning about these things for the first time, and I think it's very unclear for them how, um, how, much, of an, how much of an impact they have on these global issues. Um, I think a lot of times students get frustrated that their impact is so minuscule compared to how big these problems are. It's hard for them to imagine, for example, that taking public transport to school is a solution to uh, the global warming problem, or that not taking a plastic bag in a supermarket is a solution or a step towards a solution to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Organizing a TEDx event, however, um, puts these things into perspective. Um, it is very easy for a student to imagine. Imagine today, for example, we have about 100 people here. Um, if every one of you took a plastic cup at one of the breaks, or a paper cup during the breaks, and had a drink, that alone is 300 plastic cups or paper cups right here today, just us. Multiply this by a 1,000 events 
um, scheduled to, uh, to take place in the next 12 months worldwide. That's thousands of plastic cups, thousands of paper cups. Now, what if students could come up with solutions to these things? What if the students could then come up, uh, these solutions could then be spread through the entire TEDx global community? Um, and I find that students oftentimes are more creative and come up with these solutions more easily than adults. Uh, so why not put these, uh, resp or this responsibility or these uh, problems in their hands in a much more uh, physical way? Um, one example is from this picture, uh, which is from TEDx Amsterdam, uh, which just happened last weekend. TEDx Amsterdam, they, uh, they gave a really interesting solution to the gift bags. Um, they made these gift baskets that you could easily attach to the front, uh, the handlebars on, on bicycles. And uh, they made 500 of these, which are now spread all throughout the Netherlands. Um, and now what happens is these people can then take these gift baskets into a supermarket, uh, do their shopping, put it in their bicycles and go home without using a single, without using a single plastic bag. Um, so this is a first step into changing a process that is heavily dependent on plastic and it creates um, slowly a change in the society in which the TEDx event is in. Another very powerful example of how youth and students can be involved in these TEDx events, uh, this is a picture from TEDx Youth at, at Porto in uh, Portugal. And um, uh, what you see here is the stage um, designed by a young design agency. Um, so the, not only can youth be on stage and sharing their talent, sharing their work of arts. Um, also, you can have students at breaks showing their, uh, the artwork to participants during breaks. Uh, but also, the stage is an empty canvas. There's also opportunity for um, students who are into cinematography and video editing and sound and light technicians. Uh, this, for example, is our very uh, enthusiastic stage manager um, at TEDx Youth at ISB. So there's room for all of the arts in a TEDx event. Uh, this is our stage. Um, you can see in the back there, those are gears, and there's, a, um, there's an engine, there's a motor behind one of those gears, which made all the other gears rotate. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it was entirely designed by 15-year-olds um, at, at our school. So this is their project and their idea to convey our theme, which was Youth Building the Future. I kind of like the little, little guys there, uh, which represent them, represents the Youth Building the Future. We also had um, a very interesting um, idea to connect some of our, some of our students with professionals um, in certain fields that those students were interested in. So we, for example, connected um, Mihailo, who's a, very, a student who's very interested in becoming a designer. Uh, we connected him with a professional designer uh, from Belgrade, who now lives in, in Hungary. And um, they, uh, they sort of exchanged tips on how to improve, and, and Mihailo uh, designed the t-shirts that we wore during the, the event day. He also designed um, our, our uh, printed material. And this is something that we really hope to build on and get students involved with the, the students who are going to photograph the event, get them connected to professional photographers. The uh, students who are going to cover the uh, journalistic part of the event, get them connected with um, professionals in the jur journalism community in, in the, the event city as well. So there's a lot of potential for connecting. Imagine the inspiration that the students would get by working with established professionals in their fields that they're interested in, and imagine the benefits for a professional to connect with upcoming talent. So it's a, it's a two-way street. Another aspect of it is uh, obviously uh, building or creating an event of this dimension requires a, lot of, um, requires a lot of connections in terms of contacting sponsors and connecting with the local business and government community. Um, so from the start, students are encouraged to then um, abide to TEDx guidelines and with that means having a transparent budget. So um, I think most high school students never keep an accounting journal of their allowances, for example. So um, keep, uh, keeping the books and keeping everything transparent is a very, very important lesson to have for students who are going to become uh, voters and consumers and why not business owners and uh, politicians as well. So it's a lesson they learn early on. And also that business sense of you know, being able to sell an idea to somebody else other than your parents, right? Being able to go to talk to the CEO of a company and say, here's my thought, I want to organize this event, what can you do to help? And um, the partnerships that these students would create with these uh, sponsors directly relates to the experience that um, you guys as an audience would have in a, in a TEDx event. For example, because of um, our excellent partnerships that we created, uh, we were able to engage about 200 people from Belgrade in a project called the Inside Out Project, it's a global art project 
um, that we conducted with two of our partners. Another um, example is we, um, one of our partners offered a team building workshop that involved 20 students um, in, in it actually just this past Monday. So it was a very positive experience that is non-financial. They didn't give money to the event, uh, but they provided something else that was of equal or even superior value, I would say. We talked a little bit today, uh, the earlier speakers spoke today a little bit about social media, and, and I think it's really important to get the social media into the classroom to enhance learning, uh, but I think what could also happen is to get students out into the world and have real applications of social media. Imagine, for example, engaging students in spreading the idea of, um, or spreading ideas and spreading the concept of the event and inviting people to attend using this array of, of social media. Um, I wonder how many students today actually know that all of these exist. Um, but this is, again, an idea of getting students out there to um, learn and, and use these tools rather than bring the tools into the classroom for them to use for classroom purposes. So I think it's pretty obvious that um, it, it's a very, very transdisciplinary project. Uh, there's many, many other aspects of the event uh, that I could address. Um, but I, th I think my idea worth spreading would be that um, schools should empower its students to organize an event like this, um, either through faculty involvement, uh, it could be through institutional support, um, offering perhaps a TEDx class where students could meet um, under the supervision of a faculty member uh, to organize a yearly event or a bi-yearly event like this. Why not have students, again, empowered by their schools, um, contact and reach out to other students of other schools to make a community that has a student-led, student-organized TEDx event that happens yearly. I think that would be a marvelous way of spreading ideas, uh, spreading the talent and the creativity of the local people um, in, in, a, in a fashion that is really empowering to students. In closing, I would like to use the rest of my Serbian vocabulary and say, Hvala puno. <laughs>